You know, it may be a little cliche, but time absolutely flies, doesn't it? I don't feel like it's the beginning of 2022, but it certainly doesn't feel like the end. But here we are, as I'm recording this, on the uh, 7th of December, 2022. We pretty much are at the end of the year. And it's been an absolutely great year. And I want to talk about that a little bit. Talk about what I've been doing, what I want to do, what I liked, what I didn't like. And so this will be a lot different than my normal video. And before I lose some of you, I just want to say thanks for tuning into everything. Whether you like the racing or the histories or the competition or whatever it might be, it's fun to have folks that are as seemingly excited about all of this as I am. So rather than just talk at you for a number of minutes, I thought we'd go for a drive at least and see something fun. I'm at the Wicklow Mountains which is a, a big map, a big area. I don't want to call it a circuit or a track, but a big area that you can drive in in a saddle course by Jake Grafton. And it's something I took a look at before in the past. I've actually done a couple videos where I drive around here, but it's had a lot of updates in the year and a half or so since I covered it, which is feels like it was very, not that long ago, but I guess it was long ago now, but he's done a lot of updates to this. And so it might be fun to uh, drive around and see what might've changed. And to drive, I really couldn't stay away from something British. So we have a Austin Healey 3000 MK2, which is a part of the TCL pack by Baza. That is a bunch of awesome sports cars, touring cars from the 60s. And this is one I haven't really drive that much before, but uh, it very much fits with the scenery, I think, and something very much up my alley to drive. So we'll go around, drive around, and just talk about things. All right, so we'll pull away from the side of the road. I'm right up the road from, I think it's pronounced Laura, but don't quote me on that. But Laura, which is where you kind of spawn into this map where the little fake pits are. This is not a, a track or a map that you would race around. It's purely for driving, but it's awesome for that. In the other video, I took a Mini Cooper around here, uh, which I'm awful at driving minis. I found that out this year. That's one of the things I learned. One of the things I want to work on for 2023, racing front wheel drive cars, but Anyways, driving a Mini around here was a lot of fun, and hopefully this Austin Healey will be the same. Beautiful scenery in the Irish Hills. And this is a famous kind of loop. I think there's a lot of different things that have been filmed here over the years. I know they were on a foot marathon here, and all, all that kind of stuff. All stuff that's really cool about this, and we'll point out some things along the way, but we're headed up to a, a waterfall area now, and I think it's a pretty good drive. The whole loop for this is I think 40 kilometers around. So to put that in perspective, it's over half the distance of the Targa Florio lap. So it is a big map overall. And uh, there's some extra roads and stuff, I think towards the end, although I'll try to see along the way here if we run into anything new looking that I didn't remember from last time. But it seems like there might be some new scenery and stuff. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful place to drive. So. 2022. I did one of these types of videos last year, just talking about things, and thought it'd be nice to give somewhat of an update, because this has been quite the year, I think. A lot of changes, a lot of really good things here, and, uh, you know, for myself, is a great, great thing to put some energy into, and I hope, hope at least for folks watching that it's, it's fun, a place to maybe find out about things, or learn some stuff, or you know, just be around others that enjoy the same thing that you do. That's that's really what I'm hoping. But a whole bunch more folks watching than I did a year ago, which is crazy. At some point, I feel like it's going to stop. And it has slowed down at times and gone big other times. Gosh, I posted a truck sim video recently that got a whole bunch of new subscribers. And I'm terribly sorry to everybody interested in truck sim because... Uh, I might do some more truck sim, but that's definitely not gonna, it's not gonna become a truck sim channel, which I think a lot of folks are hoping, <laughs> at least them. But it's fun to do some new things once in a while, and you know, if that attracts some new folks that end up being into vintage racing or racing in general and things and wanna stick around, then that is great. But it's crazy to think, so 2022, coming into 2022, uh, I, I thought I was kind of fully set up and ready to go. Uh, but I still, I, I feel like it's forever ago now that I've had this, but uh, coming into 2022, I still didn't even have a full racing rig. 
And um, in, in the early part of this year, I think it was in March, at least that's when I made a video about it. So try to speed up here so I don't go super slow. But this is certainly not gonna be a uh, racing type of lap of sorts. The car sounds pretty nice. I don't know how accurate it is. I know we get a lot of folks, audiophiles out there who uh, love their engines. This feels like one of those, one of those sounds I hear quite a lot in a set of Corsa. Sounds nice, maybe not exactly as this car would sound, but it, uh, it works for me at least until I know better. But yeah, I didn't have the rig and early in this year, it was Next Level Racing that reached out to me. It's one of the first companies that really reached out to me and, uh, and, and offered basically to give me one. I made a video about it at the time and I was a little weary of this. It's, it's been something that I didn't really have to learn, but got involved with, I guess, this year and talking to companies and whether they, they make software or hardware. It's something that honestly is a little frightening to get into for a hobby at first. But obviously, Next Level Racing, I think they're a great company. And I was obviously very happy. I was looking at some of their equipment, which I think is how I got in touch with them to begin with. But um, something I was interested in getting anyway. And uh, they obviously know if I'm using their stuff, folks are going to see that. But there was never any kind of pen and paper, I'm going to do a bunch of advertising for you. And so it was really just an awesome thing that happened. And I did end up making a video about it. And I was actually thinking, I'm not, I'm not one to do hardware reviews. Get up to third gear here. I'm not really somebody that's gonna do hardware reviews. There are so many folks out on YouTube that do that and do it much better than I could. I don't have the equipment for that type of thing. But I do think it would be kind of neat to look at everything I've had now for about a year and uh, get more of a long-term usage review. Because a lot of the reviews out there, folks are getting stuff you know, to review it. So they're trying it out for a couple weeks and they do a great job, but you can only use it so much in a couple of weeks and really understand it. So having more or less the same equipment now for almost a year, I feel like it could be interesting to look at. But that's beside the point. I didn't have a rig coming into this year and now I have a rig and uh, I feel like I've had it for a whole lot longer than that. And it's absolutely changed how much I enjoy just just driving. I've always done a lot of sim racing, but to have a permanent setup that's always set up that I can jump in at any point, we see a finish sign there. So this is the end. I think this whole route is split into four separate stages. So you could actually do rally here. We got a little parking lot. We'll take a look at what this sign has. Oh, it's a map of the, uh, the track itself. So we just did the green area there, if you can see that. And we'll be uh, headed on to the orange section two now did most of the green. I was a little uh, little further up the road when we started. But yeah, you could do a rally here, which would be kind of cool. A tarmac rally in a Seto Corsa. Who knows? But to have a permanent racing setup, never had the space for it. And lucky enough, about a year ago exactly, I moved. So I do have the space. And I uh, was looking for something, rigs, and was able to work this whole thing out where I got one. And uh, it's way better than I could have imagined. And I had so much fun racing before I had a rig. Don't want to sound like it, it's necessary because I know it's not possible financially or space-wise or whatever it is for folks out there. But if you do have the uh, means to get one, I, I highly recommend it. Just to have that permanent place for, for everything to live. It's, it makes it a lot easier just to jump in and uh, do a couple laps and enjoy this uh, so much more. So that's been a huge thing. Of course, got the pedals from Hoisting Veld. And so working with sim racing companies has been this entirely new thing that was, like I said, a little bit frightening or I don't want to call it scary, but something I wasn't really comfortable with at first because I don't want to turn this into a job. It feels very uh, professional to be working with these different companies, but figuring out a way to do it on my terms and uh, I think so far I've done that and uh, I'm sure I'll do some more of it whether that be for for physical goods or for software and things but try to keep it on my terms and, and keep on doing this so that's been a huge part of things getting a new rig getting in touch with companies you know I've been talking quite a bit with Ryza and some of the folks that work over there 
and uh, certainly not working for them in any capacity, but testing out some new stuff, obviously making videos because I really enjoy Automobilista. And I I don't know how much of a part, because obviously Automobilista and Ryza, Ryza have been making historic content forever. And I, I think actually I was reading today or listening today, you know, I think some of the folks that work at Ryza were working on things like the Kart Factor mod way back when. So there's always been an interest in classic racing, or that was for Champ Car, and but Automobilista 1 had a bunch of historic content. But it does feel like that's somewhat of a focus for AMS2, and I know some of the feedback I've given them on things has, has helped, or at least created some more focus, and if I can do anything like that, whether that be with with AMS or other sims to make historic sim racing more of a thing, that that would be absolutely awesome. I know we've attracted or have attracted a decent group of, of folks to race in the leagues and stuff, and uh, obviously with folks on my Discord and, and talking on different videos, there's got a bunch of paths coming in on the road here. But there's a lot of folks interested in this, and I know previously historic sim racing racing older cars and things was kind of a novelty and I hope I can do even just a little bit to make it not so much of a novelty and have some actual competition and people that really care about that because this is an awesome awesome use for sim racing doing things that we can't really do in real life anymore rather than you know just racing modern stuff um, I feel like there could be so much more historic type sim racing so to contribute to that and feel like i have even just a, a slice of influence over a sim that's being developed and uh including some of my wishes is absolutely awesome so that's been a really positive thing with it and i hope some of that continues this really opens up up here i think there's a big ravine that's going to start on our right hand side and uh, as we get towards, we'll actually end up hitting like an intersection when we get towards the very north end of the loop here. But this year, a big change you would have seen versus previous years, I feel like getting involved, much more involved with online racing and competition. And it's something I used to do a lot of back about a decade ago now, which is crazy to think, but early 2010s, I did a lot of iRacing and I did some of that on YouTube, but it was a little bit even before I was doing a lot of YouTube stuff, so... But I did a ton of online racing there, and honestly, I got very burnt out with it. I think a lot of people experience burnout with iRacing or racing online in general, and uh, I know I definitely did back in first gear here. Very sparse over here, but it really is just grasslands from what I understand it, so... Not a lot of scenery that you would expect here. We do have the CSP grass, which is coming in. Oh, and I did recently install Pure Weather, which is what you're seeing, the amazing clouds in this. Swap from using Sol, which is kind of the older version of Pure. Pure is the new version. And it is a pay mod on Patreon, but uh, it looks awesome. And I think it's very, very much worth it. it creates very realistic weather. So this year I've gotten back involved with a lot more online racing. I, of course, did random races here and there, racing with different groups of folks and things, doing some Grand Prix Legends online racing. But this year, so we'll hit the brakes there, a bunch of rocks in front. This year, I've done a bunch more. And one of the main things I've been doing has been the rally. And so just about a year ago, I, I kind of got back into Richard Burns' rally, uh, specifically because of rally sim fans did a video about that and then started doing some rallies with uh, Jan Lehinen's whole group and that turned into doing the Sim Rally Masters Championship and that has been so much fun. We're coming up on the final round of the season for that here. This weekend I'll be starting that, the Indonesia Rally. And uh, it's been so much fun doing rally this year. It's something that in the past I've always been interested in but it wasn't something that I did a lot and frankly wasn't very good at it so it wasn't something I necessarily wanted to show and I have learned so much this year and if you go back through all my streams and things hopefully you can see some improvement uh, but I'm determined to try to finish this last rally very strong and have a good rally 
for it, but it's been so much fun, and it's, that is something I'd never expected to be doing, and it's exactly what doing YouTube and all of this stuff, you know, opens up. So it's opportunities to meet some folks and do something I never really expected to do, but I end up enjoying so much. And I'm going to absolutely continue doing Rally. Planning on doing the next season of Sim Rally Masters over the next year. Probably in a new car, although I'm a little bit torn over that. I've really enjoyed driving the Escort, which I've driven for almost every rally-related thing outside of a couple individual rallies. But I think it's time to move on to something new, so it'll be a little bittersweet for now, but I'm sure I'll get back in the Escort occasionally. But I don't know what it'll be if I'll go crazy and do Group 2, or, or Group B rather, or drive something different, slower, faster. I don't know, but I think it's time to change. But I'm excited for that, excited to learn some new things. And driving rally, beyond just improving rally skills and listening to a co-driver and understanding how to do pace notes and learning some of those driving skills that are rally specific, I feel like it has helped me in all types of racing, whether it be the rally or, or anything else, just the skills that you learn in driving a rally car are very applicable in my opinion to everything else so being able to improve my skills in uh, sim racing here we go a little parking area i want to check out the signs because last time i did this i just drove past everything it's like a bus bus stop maybe i'm not sure it's like on the uh on the route there you are here yeah so we're not too far from where we're going to meet up with section three all right we'll pull away So rally, improving my skills in rally, helping me improve everywhere else, and having a ton of fun with it. Rally is really fun. It's also really frustrating sometimes, but uh, it's all around just been so, so good. So I'm excited to do more of that. Get the sun setting a little bit here. Set it to 6 p.m., but hopefully it won't get dark or anything, although we can always turn on the lights if we need to. It's rocks out there. I thought it might have been sheep for a second pedal down here. This is exactly the type of road you would want to take any car on. I think I said this last time I drove around here. It's just almost the slower the car, the more fun it would be around here because anything too fast would be terrifying. But a nice, you know, slower car. This car, although it was fast for the time, it's not such a fast car now. Fast in a straight line, but not around the corners. But a perfect car for this is we'll slow down here for this really tight section. So online racing, rally's been a big part of that. Uh, I did a, a few random iRacing races. I did some of Seto Corsa stuff with um, the uh, SRO folks. And uh, learned, like I said, how bad I was at racing front-wheel drive cars. So maybe something to work on. Uh, but the big thing, obviously, has been the Historic Road Racing Championship and the HRRC. And that has been a, such a fun thing to put on. I did some hosting of races back when I did a lot of iRacing. You know, towards 2010, 2011. And, uh, you know, hosted a little bit of a league. We called it the Targa League main race was the Targa Virginia. I was basically trying to recreate the Targa Florio, but the best we could in iRacing at the time. Got a sign there. And we're coming up on this intersection. So this is all the way at the north end. So Sally Gap. And I think that's the whole thing we've just passed was the Sally Gap, and this is an intersection here at the top of that. And uh, the roads do not extend beyond here, but I guess if you go to the left, you could go to Lessington. But we will continue on right onto section number three. Like I said, I think it's around section four that some of the new roads exist. This is all stuff I've driven on before, but such a pleasure to drive on it. So I did some hosted races back with iRacing, but all the time when I kind of restarted doing YouTube a few years back, folks are always asking for online races or how to do online racing and things and I had been thinking up for a long time 
what I would want to do. Because I want to make anything that I'm going to do as special as possible. I don't just want to do another race. And so HRRC was, was something I really thought about for a long time. And finally put me over the edge racing the 54 cars and some of these different circuits. And I knew, I knew those were the tracks I wanted to do, but I wasn't sure what cars I wanted to do. But that 54 mod for R Factor 2 uh, is just so awesome. So I finally put it over the edge as something to uh, to do as a big series, and I've spent so much time. I don't think it's possible to explain how much time I've spent doing HRRC, coming up with all the rules and coordinating all the races and all the artwork and broadcast and all this stuff. It's it's a huge, huge time commitment, and I knew it was going to be that going into it, just from having done this in the past, to do a hosted race right, make sure it runs right and has everything folks would need. It's just a huge amount of work, but it's fun work and it's worth it in the end. But that's why I'd want any type of hosted racing that I'm doing to be, you know, something that I'm really passionate about just because I know how much work goes into it. But at the same time, it is so much work. It's taken a lot of other things away from from doing stuff here that I want to do. And maybe you can notice if you're not super into that racing, you certainly will have seen other types of videos and things slow down. I haven't done a Richie Axelson 1966 race in quite a while. And I want to do that stuff, but it's just trying to juggle everything is, is hard. So as fun as the HRC has been, you know, we're coming up on the final race here. It'll definitely be a little bit of a relief when it's done for now. For now. <laughs> So the number one question that I'll get from everybody is, what's next? I'll talk about that more in a bit, but HRRC has been a huge thing. It's been a huge positive. I've done much better myself in it than I thought I was going to do. I've always considered myself kind of a mid-pack racer, uh, but I think I got a little bit of a jump on folks the first couple races, and it's helped me out quite a lot. Uh, but yeah, I'll have to see here if I can hold on to the championship through this final round. I, I don't know if I'll be able to win the race, but points-wise, maybe I can work it out to uh, to get that. But it's been fun being competitive because I've never... It's been infrequent that I'm running towards the sharp end of things. So that's been that's been tons of fun. Those cars are, are so much fun. And the community, the different drivers, I feel like you hear a lot of folks talk about community and things. But this is the first time I've ever really understood that completely. Having this group of drivers that... You know, we spend so much time together, whether that's on the Discord talking about things between races or during the qualifying weeks, which I think everybody's really enjoyed. It sounds like a bit of a slog at first, having a week of qualifying, and sometimes it is having a week of qualifying. How many laps you're going to do? We've got some parked cars there. But it creates a lot of anticipation and drama and community just racing with everybody all that time so having that group of folks around you know I, I feel like i know better than ever a long list of names the folks that i see in comments or on my discord or in other races and things i'll watch other streams and videos and see folks that i know from hrc or even other other places so that's been just a massive positive the league itself has gone really well i think We've had a couple small issues along the way with things, but racing in R Factor 2 is a fickle thing, especially for multiplayer. So the fact that we've only had a couple issues in this last race, the Tiger Florio was the biggest one of those. And was a, that was a big disappointment for myself and my performance for it, and actual driving. I'm, I don't know when I'll get another chance to do that. And, uh, just so much stuff went on that week leading up to it and that day and it just was not in the right place to do it excuses excuses but uh the race itself ended up being amazing and uh put the highlight video together for it for folks that didn't catch it but it's uh it was so awesome once it worked out but we had some issues there but otherwise there really has not been too many technical issues or anything like that which is which you know goes into all the folks helping out Beyond myself, I've had a couple amazing admins in 
in my community for Discord and all that with Ian and Liam step in to help out really without me asking too much, just saying, are you, are you guys interested in helping? And they've kind of taken it on to, to help coordinate lots of things and obviously do some adminning and things during races. And uh, yeah, just some of the moments we've had, it would not have been possible to get through. Now, is this a road? Well, it is a road, I promise you. We'll do a little reverse here. I don't know if this is a road we can drive down. So we're on... Well, I'm never going to pronounce those. Wicklow Way, I guess. Hmm. I'm not sure if we can go that way. Well, we might as well try it. Hopefully we don't fall through the terrain, which can tend to happen if you go off the road and set a course on some of these big maps, but we'll see. We'll see where this goes. It could just end here down the way a little bit. Fun little, it's almost a driveway. We're probably driving up to somebody's house right now. Looks like the road might actually end, maybe, maybe not. Ah, see, this is exactly what I was hoping to find. Some little hidden streets or something that take you somewhere cool. Wow. Get a nice view over the scenery there. At certain angles, I think the texturing and things, it looks alright, but then you see a view like that and it looks really, really good drive under the grass just a little bit but I mean this looks like Ireland I have not been to Ireland but I imagine this is exactly what it looks like and I uh, would love to go here It'd be fun to drive around this a bit and then come here in real life I know in the last video I did of this I had a good number of folks comment that are at least familiar with this area or have come here before like I said it's a place that you would uh, come to drive a lot of folks come up here to drive cars and uh all the comments say it's spot on. I think it's based on some LiDAR data, so that makes it extra accurate. This is a cool little road, though. Drive into the sun here. So, like I'm saying, HRRCs, it's been so much fun, but uh, immediately after starting this championship, it almost felt like the day we started it, folks were asking what happens after that. and. Um, definitely going to take a break from running. We're not going to jump in to start a league in January or something like that, which I know will disappoint a, a lot of folks. I wonder if we're going to end up meeting up back with the road from earlier. Maybe. We'll see. I know that'll disappoint some folks. And, you know, I know a lot of people like just kind of constant racing. Uh, but because of how much work it is and because I know... The more events and things you have, the less special they end up being, the less maybe participation you get or, um, you know, n noise around it or people practicing, you know, more diligently. I, I want to keep anything that I'm doing a, a bit more special so that there's not going to be kind of constant series or events. And I think we found a dead end. My plan is to not uh, do kind of constant events, but I will absolutely be doing some more events. See if we can get ourselves turned around without Austin powering this too bad. All right, I probably cut there a little bit just to smooth it out a bit, but I totally turned around without any issues at all. Didn't fall through the track or anything like that, but back on the road. We'll join back up where I'm at, but I love this little offshoot of a road. I wish there was some scenery on it other than some grass, but it's neat to have little extra roads here. There might just be grass here. The view, though, that's worth the price of admission. It's very cool. I'm looking around with Track IR, by the way, which I got a lot of questions about that in that truck sim video I did. I don't use it all the time. I used to use it quite a bit when I did Grand Prix Legends stuff back in the day. It's unfortunately stopped working with Grand Prix Legends, at least a lot of the newer mods. I think it would be something that's fixable, but the creator of the Track AR plugin for GPL hasn't updated it in years and years. I don't think they're around too much anymore. We got another road there. Should I? Might as well. 
get hate in the comments if we don't go down every possible road. Alright. I don't know what the Irish version of uh, Dukes of Hazard is, but that might be it. Do a quick spin around here in the grass and get ourselves headed in the right direction. It did go down the hill there, but there's not too much to see in it. Actually, you can just see a house there down the end of the road, and uh, we're going to pass that, I believe. So we will see where it ends up anyways. So I can't remember exactly where I was with talking about the HRRC, but I think the important... The important points to note are it's been incredibly fun. It's been something I'm, I'm so happy to do. It's been a ton of work, and uh, there's not going to be an immediate season two. I don't know if we're going to do a full season two, but I do plan in 2023 at some point to do something, whether that's a full season again, using the same cars, different cars, or whether that's you know specific events. I don't exactly know yet, but uh, I feel like hosting some historic races. I want to keep them special, like I was saying. And uh, I want to do things that folks haven't done before or are, are awesome that people didn't think was possible or needed a lot of coordination to make happen. And uh, I think I might have a chance to do some of that stuff. So now that being said, I would love, you know, for some, some other groups to do more hosted racing and I would be very open to joining some. I get asked quite a lot to join races so I almost maybe shouldn't even be asking for folks to, to host stuff because it's so difficult to even join 2% of what, a, what I'd be asked to uh, or you know let known is existing out there but you know I, I hope I'm not the only one in the end to uh, try to put together big series and things. I know I'm not the only one to do that uh, and so I just hope it helps inspire some more folks if, if we've done that at all to do some more and if you really like the 1954 sports cars and we don't end up doing more of that then you know you can always host one of those and i think there's been a couple groups i was talking to uh some of the just race guys who are absolutely awesome you know i say i say just race a lot during the reviews of the hrc races or in some of the advertising and stuff for it because they've literally for free just offered to host all of our races on servers and do all the work that's required to get those up and running and things which uh, for our factor too is you know quite tricky sometimes so they put in quite a lot of time for free nothing but me saying their name once in a while which they don't even ask me to do so um, super happy with that but they were telling me some other folks were doing some of the 54 sports cars recently which i love to see i hope, I hope more and more folks do it all right so we come to the bottom here and i think we have to go to the right if I'm not mistaken. We'll go to the right, which I think is going to bring us back towards Laura. I sure hope I'm pronouncing that right. But where we started, pretty much. And then we'll come back around, because I think the new roads continue on kind of south from there. But this is a really narrow road. I remember going down this before. It's kind of a fun one. It's fun to try to go fast around here, but it is, it's very much like a rally stage. So you got to be very precise and careful. But it gives you that thrill when all the scenery is going past and everything. So I think those are the main things. We'll start start section four here. I think those are the main things. You know, obviously I've been doing this year and and wanted to talk about a bit. It's been just so much fun, but all the time with the league is definitely taken away from some of the other things that I'd want to do, and mainly the '66 series, which. I very much intend on, on finishing, or at least going through the Formula One parts and stuff. Uh, it was really fun, that whole project, to try to do kind of a realistic race driver going through one of those years. I don't think folks sometimes realize how much racing some drivers did back then. And you know, me doing as Richie Axelson the sports cars and some touring car races and some NASCAR. And I wish I could put IndyCar in there. There's just no way to really do that. Um, and you know, along with the Formula Two and the Formula One and the non-championship races, that was that was Jim Clark, Jackie Stewart, maybe not Jackie Stewart, but Jim Clark. You know, Chris Amon, Bruce McLaren, John Surtees. That's what all these guys did in the 1960s. Graham Hill, I'm forgetting a whole bunch, but that's what they actually did. They did kind of any type of racing, 
everywhere that they could. And uh, it's pretty amazing stuff. So that was the idea around doing that. And yeah, it's been, been a little while we did, what did I do last? The Dutch Grand Prix. And German Grand Prix is up next. I believe it's the next race. And I would love to get one out before the end of the year, but we'll see. But certainly want to continue on with that. I want to get back into some of the older Sims too. I know that's not everybody's thing. That is one of the tricky parts about having kind of varied interest. If I only made one type of thing, it might get boring, but there would be an audience that that's exactly what they want, so. Doing so many different things, it's not everybody's interest all the time, but I do love playing some of the older Sims, whether that's looking at, looking at them more in like a review sense or doing a single stream or doing a more in-depth type championship. And I, I would like to do a, I would like to do a second season of the IndyCar 2, go on to the 1990 season and do all those races. I had a lot of fun doing the 89 season. Feels like a long time ago now, at least to me, but doing that through the end of last year and through the beginning of this year was, was quite a lot of fun. And uh, dramatic as well. It shows just how much fun some of those old sims were at doing offline racing. All right, we've got a little split in the road here. So that to the left goes to Roundwood, which is, I think, one of the towns modeled, but we're going to continue on towards Lodan. Well, that's not where I thought we were going. But we'll continue on back towards the start here and then loop back around to uh, Roundwood in the new section. So, IndyCar 2 would be fun to do. I know a lot of folks, it would be cool to do, uh, you know, obviously love NASCAR and things, and uh, there are a few other folks out there that do kind of let's play seasons of NASCAR, but doing kind of a first person, maybe 1980s era NASCAR season would be a lot of fun. But the thing I struggle with there is how long the races should be. Uh, Cause you don't want them to be hours and hours and hours. Cause some of those, some of those races were very long. Maybe some folks would like them to be hours and hours. But uh, doing full distance would be quite a lot. But then if you're not doing full distance, you don't really get the strategy and the things that, you know, made those that type of racing special. So I always struggled with how long the races would need to be. The car's feeling very squirrely. I wonder if I've hurt the suspension on some of those getting back on the road back there. Might just be the road. There's a crown in the road and parts of it. The road surface and things on this is quite detailed. A lot of bumps and things not quite as bumpy that was one comment i got quite a few times in the last time i looked at this is it's not quite as bumpy as it would be in real life and apparently we're missing a lot of farmers but otherwise very very accurate so we're getting into that golden time now and you can really see or you can't see right now because we're in the trees but the sky itself is just so realistic with pure that add-on makes it really really nice Seto corsa continues to be impressive. So I think that's most of everything. I might think of a thing or two that, uh, you know, with the channel and YouTube and everything that I'd want to talk about, but that's most of everything. So I did ask folks, similar to how I did last year, if there's any questions or anything that I could answer for you, and we'll stop here at this intersection so I can pull that up. But it's fun to, uh, see if folks have any curiosities and maybe answer some of those. So I did uh, pull together some of the questions. Now, there were way more questions than I was expecting, and so I, I can't get to everything or else this video will be hours and hours long, but I do want to go through some of them because I thought they brought up some interesting uh, points. So we'll continue here. So this road is closed to the right, and apparently dumping is strictly prohibited, so we will not dump our trash anywhere. But we'll see if I can read these while I'm driving. Now, Pud asked me, amongst saying some very nice things, and there were a lot of comments where you folks were, were nice. I was not fishing for compliments, but I will absolutely take them. By and large, I have very few negative interactions with folks. And I consider myself lucky because I do see what some other creators and 
people on YouTube have to deal with, and very, very infrequently do I get anybody that says anything negative to me. And uh, if I do, it's so rare that I, I, don't, I don't really care, because if 99% of people are saying nice things, then I think I'm doing an all right job. So I very much I was not fishing for compliments, but it was nice to get a whole bunch of them. And so along alongside being very nice, Pud asked me, um, my favorite racing engine is now the reason that this is a tough one for me and I wanted to bring this up because the mechanics of cars and the different engines and the spe uh, specificities of that is not something that I knew as much as I do now certainly but it's not, it's not something that I you know was as interested in for a long time I've always been interested in racing for the personalities and the competition of it and the stories, you know, the Ferrari, Ford versus Ferrari stories and the different battles and things. That's that's what's interested me most in racing. And so the whole mechanic aspect of it's obviously a huge part of racing and especially with historic racing is something that uh, a lot of folks love about it. It's maybe their main interest. And so I've, I've learned a lot about it. And um, that's that's been another great thing about this is you know doing doing videos about cars and learning about them and what makes them special you obviously learn a lot about the mechanics of them i, lo I love learning about new things and so uh anytime i can do that it's uh, it's always a good time but favorite engine is a really tough question I don't know if I have a favorite. You have the more ridiculous engines, like the V16s and the H16s, which are just interesting because they're so odd. And then you've got the standbys, like the DFE, which are just absolutely dominant. But I tend to like cars with a lot of power for myself racing, so I'd have to say some sort of V8, whether that's a DFE or, or something else, but something with quite a lot of power. I like... Uh, rear wheel drive cars I have found not so good at the front wheel drive maybe I'll learn to love those too but yeah any kind of uh, you know sports car probably it's been a bit of a shift in my preference as well I think I used to be a formula guy formula racing was where I was at but sports car racing is maybe more of a uh, nuanced taste but something I've, I've loved a lot so I love the 1950s type sports cars put a big V8 in there and uh, I think I'd be a pretty happy guy so that was Pud's question hopefully answered at least a little bit see here if I can look at another one so Eaton Britches asks me about the uh, 80s 70s 80s 90s GTO so I did the video not too long ago about the Audi GTO and that era of racing with IMSA and sports cars in the 80s, 90s. Not one I know a lot about. I think I said that in that video. So I do think, you know, I would, would like to do more there. Group C is a pretty fascinating time. I think we might have some more Group C goodies on the horizon in various sims, if I can say that. So it would be fun to explore more, but I think my racing interests are a bit before then, generally. 70s and earlier tends to be what I'm most interested in, but I do like that. I do like the 80s, you know, hyper downforce type thing. But it starts to get a bit, a bit wild past then. I mean, of course, I love 90s racing. That's kind of what I grew up with, but maybe the sports car side will be something I can learn a lot more about and, and then share. It's tough to to share things that I don't know anything about, and that's where it tends to be mostly my interests that I'm sharing here. Things that I already know a bit about, but then I'll learn a bit more or make sure I, I know the facts as they were. This might be where that road came down to meet there on the right. It's around here somewhere, in case you were curious. But yeah, we'd love to cover more of that. Sports car racing in general, I've grown a lot more interested in, and uh, especially historic sports car racing. So that's a, a big era of it, and uh, one that would be fun to cover quite a bit. All right, Brett asked me a pretty good question, I thought, and one that uh, I'm sure a lot of folks will have thoughts on about developers and the content that's put out in Sims. Asked me if uh, I wish developers would flesh out content a bit more. That might be where that road came down there to the right. 
Mm. But, you know, we see this in Automobilista 2 is a great example of a sim that has a little bit of everything, but, you know, it doesn't have too much fully fleshed out. And I, I'd argue that there's a lot of things in that sim that are, are pretty fleshed out, the Brazilian content especially. But obviously, like if I look at the 60s formula cars, we've got a few tracks. We have, you know, just a couple of real cars. I, I do like that style of older sim where you had everything from a series, all of the tracks, all the cars. So we'll come down to the road here. All right, so I think this is actually where used to have to you had to go to the right and that's going to bring us right back to the uh start of the lap but we'll actually go to the left here and we'll come back up because i know i didn't show off the uh actual starting location but we'll take a left here and uh hop on the curb so this is all new to me i think it's been added over several different versions of this but i've never been down here we'll head towards roundwood i guess but yeah, you know, Grand Prix Legends is a great example of a, a sim that was dedicated to a very specific thing. 1967, Formula One, pretty much had all the tracks, you had all the cars. A lot of people really want that. But a missing curb there. A lot of people really miss that type of sim where it was dedicated to something. And I have to agree. Uh, I think it, it helped make different sims more unique. It seems like every sim now has has to have some of the same content in it, some of the same cars, sports cars and GT3 and things, and some of the same tracks. You gotta have the Nurburgring, you gotta have Spa. Uh, you know, would I want a sim that doesn't have those? Maybe not, but since we do have them in so many sims, then maybe we don't need those things in every sim. Although, there's so many folks crying to have the Nordschleife in ACC, even though it's not. So, I, I'm not sure if that'll ever change in Sims. Uh, you know, maybe that's one way that a Sim could stand out is by specializing in a specific area. But I think to attract a lot of customers these days, you have to have a pretty wide selection of things. You see, that's why the Sim we're in right now, a set of course, so that's the main reason it's so popular is just how mod modable it is and how many different things you can do. We could very quickly go jump in a 2022 Formula One car and have a pretty realistic Grand Prix at any of the tracks that exist in the calendar from this. Or we could go have a 60s race, uh, sports cars at Le Mans, or we could do NASCAR, kind of. So, it's the variety is fun in sim racing, but yeah, it would be nice to have dedicated sims for different things. And, uh, I, I would definitely love that, especially for the types of racing that I like. It would be cool to have a vintage sports car sim, but how many copies would that really sell? Got a bed and breakfast down here. Very nice. Looks like a nice place to stay, maybe. That was a good question from Brett. All right, so... Mushman asked me if I could drive any car in real life, what would it be? If I could drive or race any car in real life, what would it be? And that's another one of these questions that, that would be so tough to answer. Um, you know, honestly, because I'm not a real racing driver. I'm very realistic in that way. I would, I would not jump in some crazy car, even if offered. Unless it was the right kind of condition, you know, closed environment somewhere to... Uh, be able to putt around and just experience it a little bit. So I think I'd be very, very willing to jump in like a older sports car or something like this on the road or a track, but not to, not to push it on a track in a crazy way, but just experience it. I want to drive some of these types of cars and see what they're like and things. But as for racing, I feel like I have so many steps to, uh, you know, not doing much of any real racing, so many steps that it would take to even feel comfortable enough to do a you know a drive in anything that uh i don't know if i really would agree to do it but you know go for a ride along for sure drive something at a snail's pace absolutely but i think the days for myself are, are gone where i have that uh teenage exuberance to just jump in a car and say i would go flat out 
Uh, would love to get there someday and would love to do some some real racing. I think I had another question from somebody that, uh, you know, asked if I'd be interested or if I had the opportunity to do some SCCA or whatever kind of racing, would you do it? And absolutely. But it'd have to be the right thing. And of course, you're never going to have that crazy opportunity to uh, jump in a car that's way more than you could handle. Hopefully not anyway. So I think I'd be pretty safe in that respect some different garages and things. I don't just want to speed past everything because I've never seen any of this, but it seems like we're getting down into a little village here, which is quite cool. Yeah, so we had a question. I think I answered this a little bit earlier, but from Stephen Stones about how much research and things I have to do um, for videos. And I, I always do some research, watch videos, read books, read articles different things to try to uh, make sure I understand even if I think I know some of the facts you you know depending on how you heard things we've got an antique store there depending on where you learned about something or how you learned about it you maybe don't know everything and uh, if there's one thing I've learned in doing YouTube is you definitely have to be accurate with your facts when you talk about things which makes sense you don't want to spread misinformation so always do some reading and I mentioned earlier, I love learning about these things. And so that's one of the fun things about doing videos is that I kind of have a reason, if I needed one, a reason to, to learn about stuff. So I think we're getting towards the end here. Just got another closed road out that way. This is really nice. You can see, I feel like the scenery over here is a bit nicer than some of the other areas. Not that the other areas aren't good, but maybe it's somewhere that's a bit newer, has there's more refined skills and things in putting the scenery in. It does look really nice. So, always learning about stuff. Um, and I use the learning a lot to actually dictate what I'm going to do videos on. You know, I feel like there's a couple ways some of that happens. Either something new is coming out, like I looked at Spa recently, or the 70s Spa. Or uh, I looked at the March 701, that was a car had to read about quite a bit. So that was because something came out and I wanted to learn about it to uh, be able to, to make a video on it. Another road shooting off there. Maybe we'll go up there on the way back. Seems like it might have a good view. Look at this. The sunset, golden hour. Absolutely beautiful. The other way I'll cover things is based off of what I've learned somewhere. Either I see a video or read something or either a book or see something on the internet and become interested in a topic and then seek, seek out a way to replicate that or experience it a little bit in a sim. I realize I'm driving on the right side of the road here too, which I don't think you'd do here. I'm sure somebody will point that out. but. Yeah, sometimes I'll, I'll see something and then try to replicate that in sim and that ends up becoming you know, something I do. But in both ways, doing a lot of research. And uh, it's, it's one of the joys of this. I'm very interested in history and things. And so it's a, it's a great way to uh, scratch that itch, as it were. All right, need to fly through some of these comments or some of these questions. Make sure I answer ones that I haven't already answered. So I had this question from uh, Eblees about what my favorite 1967 Formula track is. And uh, Formula One season, they say specifically. So I can't choose something from one of the other formulas itself. So the 1967 Formula One season, I mean, it would be very easy to say something like a spa franc or champ a road going up that way too. This is actually quite a lot longer of a road than I was thinking it was, which is quite nice. The Spa Francorchamps and Nurburgring are both great tracks. Obviously, wouldn't pick Le Mans Bugatti Circuit. Although I don't hate that track as much as uh, a lot of folks. I think compared to the other circuits of the time, the Bugatti Circuit at Le Mans was quite a Mickey Mouse type course. These days, it's very average, and so it would be fine. But uh, back in '67, when you were racing on amazing circuits like Spa or the Nurburgring and others, but. Watkins Glen is a great track. I love the flow of the original Watkins Glen circuit. Mexico is underrated, I feel like. That version, the 67, 60s, 
Hermanos Rodriguez. Mexico City track was a, was a nice one. I feel like I'm forgetting some. I always raced a lot at Rouen in Grand Prix Legends, which was not a 67 circuit, but I always liked that track. It's a tricky track in Sims to drive going sharp downhill there. We've got a bunch of roads coming off this. I feel like we could go in so many directions. But I think I would have to pick, out of the 67 seasons, Zandvoort as my favorite. And specifically that layout. I don't, I don't care so much these days for the modern Zandvoort. It's a fine track compared to other modern tracks. But the, the classic version, without any chicanes, so pre-70s, was such a special track. The footage from Frankenheimer's Grand Prix of Jackie Stewart during practice going around there is just some of the best. It's a very natural course, just grass hills next to it. It's, it's a good one. We have a great version in Sims from Sergio Loro. That, uh, that is a fun one. But that track's got a great flow to it. I've always struggled with turn one there, but uh, I think that's probably my favorite one, so it's a good question. So I got a question here, and I wanted to bring this one up. Uh, it's from Swindell Mac. Hopefully, it won't swindle me. But asking if I would do Le Mans 24 hour with different types of cars. All right, we've come into a village, so maybe this is Roundwood. Uh, this is very much British looking, uh, obviously Irish village. Very, very nice building textures and things. There's obviously photo photos and all that, but it. Uh, with the lighting that Pure has and adds with Custom Shaders Patch to a set of course, it sometimes looks real. Obviously low poly on cars and things, but it uh, definitely does a good job at putting you somewhere. Bunch of cool stores and things. I don't know any of these stores. Got a pharmacy there. Some yellow flashing lights. I don't know what that means, if I should stop or not. Just roll on through. Roundwood in, yeah, so we're in Roundwood. A lot of beer signs, so maybe there's a few pubs. Gotta love a good pub. But, question from Mr. Swindell. It's a nice little town. I'll probably go back through that on the way back. Um, so if I was to do, uh, you know, if I do more 24 hours in Le Mans. So I did the GTR 2 for the 66 season. 24 hour race was, what, well, it ended up being over 5 hours, the video for it. That was such a project to put together, and it, it was a lot of fun, a lot of work, and uh, it was challenging. It's so tough to do endurance racing in a sim that comes off convincing with AI. GTR 2 can kind of do it, but you, you know, there's issues here and there with it. Uh, some of the modern sims can do okay, but especially for classic stuff, it's, it's tough to pull off. So I would love to explore more Le Mans. I don't know if I'll be doing another kind of let's race for sports cars unless something changes a 67 is a pretty well covered season so maybe maybe i would but i love Le Mans. it's one of the races you know i grew up with indianapolis 500 is kind of the big race i feel like a monaco was introduced to me a bit later but that then became such a big race alongside indy and then Le Mans was the most recent of the big races for me to become interested in. I think it was just the most foreign to my my interest growing up. And you can see what I mean about the sky here. Look at that. It just it looks so nice. I do have it on the photo mode for pure. It looks like we do have a uh, some sports fields. A soccer field, as I would call it. Football. Whatever you want to call it, I don't really care. This is so cool. <laughs> I know you can actually run this with uh, AI as well if you want traffic and things. But I just wanted to explore it today, so I don't want to be running into anybody. Um, Le Mans itself, definitely want to go back there. I'll obviously be racing online with the uh, HRRC, but very specifically saying that this is not the 24-hour replica type race, because we're just doing a two-hour race, and uh, we're not going to do full day-to-night transitions or anything like that. 
we'll say it's a different sports car race at the same track, but maybe in the future it could host a virtual classic vintage Le Mans, maybe a little longer, maybe full length. Who knows? Driver swaps, maybe. But want to do want to do that justice if if I was to do it. But for an offline version. I might do it again. I don't know. I don't have plans directly to do that, but I would love to. I would like to race some 70s cars around there. I know there's some interesting mods floating around for prototypes, 70s prototypes, and always interested in Francois Sever and his time with Matra at Le Mans. And um, I think Henri Pescarolo was involved with that and things. So I would love to learn more about that part of his career and, and maybe share that in some videos and things too. So that could be to come someday but an interesting question tiffany asked me about indycar 2 coming back which i already talked about here but absolutely want to i love indycar 2 doesn't seem like we're going to be getting any more uh recent indycar sim anytime soon although ams2's indycar stuff's interesting it's good in ways and uh getting better all the time I think I'm due for another look at some of what's been released there since they have come out with Indianapolis and everything. But IndyCar 2 for sure, because I, I still think that's one of the best ways to actually do a vintage IndyCar season. Even though it's such an old sim. We passed an orange sign there, so I might be having to turn around up here. But I kind of want to go back through that. So yeah, we got a road closed. That's quite a long way. So that's really interesting. We could actually go to the left here, but I have a feeling that meets up to where... I was a bit earlier. Yeah, Sally Gap. So that would head back up that way. So we'll turn around and um, go back through the village. There are a few side roads there. Maybe we can explore here too before wrapping things up. I'm sure this will be quite a long video, but I know some folks like that type of thing. All right. So I'm looking through some of these questions here too. So I got a good question from Fred, who I know has been around for a long time. So I appreciate you always being here, Fred, and commenting on different videos and stuff. I do recognize the folks that have been around for quite a long time. I think I do got to turn on my lights here. The men have already been on. It's one of the things that Pure actually fixes. It always just kind of bugged me in a set of Corsa, is that uh, with Soul and the default weather engine and things as well, when you turn your lights on during the day, you actually see them during the day, which is obviously not how that's supposed to work. But up here fixes that. You only see your lights in low light conditions, like at night or if you're in a really dark area, which is quite cool. One of those little things that always bugs me. But anyways, Fred asked me about doing car setups. Now, this is one I've, I've purposely stayed away from, although in a few videos I've shared some setup things, but I've, I've never been a good setup guy. I'm kind of one of those drivers, I'm sure a lot of you out there are the same way, where you, you find a setup or you know how to tweak a couple things, but generally you're actually better at adapting how you drive to a bad setup or a, a ill handling car. And I think that's a good skill to have, but in the last couple years, I've definitely been improving some of my setup skills and I was gonna try to go down there, but it looks like there's a gate. I've been improving my setup skills a bit with the league, with Rally, and um, I thought maybe it could be interesting to share. I, I definitely could not do an in-depth setup guide for anything, so I simply, I don't know everything that well. It's a nice reflection on the lake there. I don't know, you know, how, really how to set things up, so I, I wouldn't be doing it justice to a... Uh, do an in-depth setup guide, but I could come at it from the angle of somebody that doesn't know everything, like probably some other folks out there. So we'll run over a curb. That's what you get for looking around. We should be fine. <laughs> so I could look at it from, from how I actually do. I know how to change some things to fix some things with the car. Maybe that could be useful. I'm not sure though, but yeah, it's one of those things, you know, uh, you don't need to know everything about a setup, but it's good to know some things. And so that's, maybe I could show share those things, uh, the, kind of the highlights of things you need to know. Things about steering lock, roll bars, the really big stuff that can really make a big change and, and fix some major issues that you may be having. having. There's the uh, 
soccer field again, I'll call it that. I got a good question from Mr. Mini Pelote, I believe is how you would say the name. Ask me how much time I spend on sim racing content each week in sim racing. Probably way too much time. It is my, my main, probably one of my only hobbies these days. And so most of my free time is spent doing sim racing, whether that's just for myself. I tried to do sim racing just for myself whenever I can. So not practicing for a race, not preparing for a video, just doing something that's interesting to me. Because I'll find a lot, of the, a lot of the time that's where my best ideas come from, is just experiencing something and saying, ah, this is actually something that would be fun to show folks. All right, we'll go to the right here. I almost want to turn my signal on. So I think this is going to cut up actually to the street, but I don't think I've seen it here before. And uh, we'll come back down because I do want to go back through the village before I wrap things up. Oh, trying out things that I'm just interested in is often where good videos and, and things come from anyway. So I'm always trying to leave some time for doing whatever I'm interested in. But otherwise, you know, it, it does take a lot of preparation to do league racing, to do the rallies especially. That takes a long time. I could always do more, I feel like, recce and uh, practicing and rally, especially because it's not my strongest type of racing. Just looking down all these streets, hopefully you're not getting whiplash. So, quite a lot of time. I'd say uh, probably at least, at least five days a week I'm doing some driving. It takes an enormous amount of time to put together a video. This video will be quite the exception because I'll probably throw in a couple scenic shots right at the beginning to give you a sense of where we are but otherwise it's going to be fairly unedited just driving around so something like this it's still going to take probably an hour post video to get everything ready but for some of the more complex videos like the spa video i probably spent at least well i, I didn't know i spent weeks actually practicing during the beta for that and uh, testing out the tracks making sure i got the right AI competitiveness and learning the way I can show it off the best and I already knew a lot about spa obviously so not as much research as some other things but you know prepared for that for a couple weeks for the March 701 same thing I was practicing and trying that car for quite a while so the amount of time I spend with a track car sim varies quite a lot but I usually try to make sure I know what I'm doing before I making a video of it occasionally I'll make a like first look and uh, try something the night it comes out but there's a lot of that out there and after uh, after a week goes by it's not really valuable video anymore it's not a valuable video anymore so it's uh, I don't know, much prefer to know what's going on before I make a video of it. So I spent a lot of time just testing stuff and uh, making sure I know how it works and all that. But it's all fun, so it's, it's kind of, it's, you know, a little bit of work here and there, but it's mostly fun. But yeah, that takes a long, a long time. Shooting the videos themselves quite often takes, you know, a, 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 quite a few hours. I don't even know how to quantify it. And then editing takes a ton of time, but luckily I like editing. It's fun for me. It's kind of another artistic thing. All right, where are we? I'm just gonna look at the map here. Oh, wow. So this gray road, so I guess these gray roads are actual roads we can drive down, because I thought, I thought they weren't, but apparently we can. So this is really cool. So what I'm gonna do is loop back around, back out of here. We'll loop back down through Roundwood and then back to the very start before we fully wrap things up. A little more of a drive. I think if I go this way, We'll come back to uh, to the street we turned around on earlier. The rev limiter in there. Very... <laughs> I don't think this would have had a chip. But probably good to not blow the engine randomly. So I spend, I spend a lot of time sim racing, but it's what I like to do. So I think it uh, you should do what you like to do. It's pretty clear when, when some folks only do sim racing to make the video and there's nothing wrong with that but i think you can definitely tell so hopefully hopefully you can tell that i very much enjoy a lot of this and uh very infrequently am i doing something here that i don't love 
All right, I got those good questions. This is kind of one of these existential questions from Moria, who's one of our league drivers in uh, HRRC. So hope you're doing well and getting ready for Le Mans. In the Jag with me, we got to. Uh, we won't be able to win the championship from Ferrari, but hopefully we can at least score a few points and not make ourselves look silly come season end. Very much road closed there. But Moria asked me about how do I feel about sim racing's long-term future? Where do I see it in five to ten years? I, I have some thoughts on this. I haven't really thought about it extensively to formulate this grand grand hypothesis or anything but I, I think uh, I think we're in a really good spot with sim racing sim racing is more popular than ever which is a double-edged sword in some ways but I think it overall nets out positive you know, it's better to have more interest that maybe some of it's misdirected or not exactly in a way you'd want than to have less interest and things fading away so it seems like it's going up and up you know, obviously with everything that's gone on the past few years, but beyond that as well. And uh, I, I think in five to ten years is not that far away. If I look at what sim racing was like five to ten years ago, not that different, honestly. We had a lot of the same things. So, like with a lot of things, the progression of technology, the progression of the whole environment and everything... All right, we're already back here. It's passing the lake. We'll pass that soccer field here in a minute. The football pitch. But things slow down or the, the progressions or the evolutions aren't necessarily as dramatic. Although we still get surprised here once in a while with, with something new. So I, I feel like a lot of things will be the same. We might still be in a Seto Corsa here in 10 years. But I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I think the chances that something else comes along and fully unseats something like this are, are pretty small. You know, we saw this with R Factor 1, and when R Factor 2 came out, it's kind of its own thing. It's not what R Factor 1 was. And a set of course, in many ways, is much more like what R Factor 1 was. So I, I think there'll be a lot of the same things around. The thing I like the most, and, and something I may be scared about, is anything going away. Because we saw this somewhat recently with Project Cars 2, which was never something I was very interested in. I didn't really play Project Cars too much. Uh, although some of the content's really interesting, it's just not my type of sim. But the fact that it's gone now is quite scary. Now, I'm sure there's always going to be ways to get it. As there will be for many things, but... It's not officially around. Unlike a lot of very old games and sims, you can't just get Project Cars 2 now, which is quite odd. And, and that worries me a lot if licensing and various things get involved that start really restricting what we're able to do. Or like DLC that was in a sim is no longer in the sim anymore. We see that occasionally with things. That, that could become very worrisome. So... Hopefully stuff like that doesn't start happening regularly, and, and the Project Cars 2 thing is more of an isolated incident. But assuming everything dis doesn't suddenly disappear, uh, we have this amazing back catalog of sims that are really good sims for different things. And so I would look at additional, additional sims, additional d things inside of games. We'll go up here to the right. We haven't been up there yet. Yeah, so we're right in Roundwood now. It's kind of cool we have a map. So we got a little section of streets. We'll take the little loop here. Bring us back around. <laughs> I'm just driving on the wrong side of the road the whole time. Go here on the on the left side. It's so weird to me. So assuming everything doesn't disappear, we have an amazing back catalog of sims and games that are good sims that we can continue to play. So anything new... You know, like I was saying, is going to be just additional stuff. And hopefully, hopefully stuff, you know, continues to come out that's interesting and fun and unique. And uh, whether that's historic or anything, really. I mean, it's a little known fact. I don't know why I'm turning up here. Let's see if there's anything up this way. There's nothing up here. A little housing area. Turn around on the grass. Hopefully I won't find any holes. I have a nasty habit of falling through the ground. <laughs> in Assetto Corsa on stuff like this. There we go.
but yeah, hopefully unique, interesting things come out. It's a little known fact that uh, I do like modern racing as well. We've got this little snarky comment from Aiden Millward. A couple folks commented on it that he's being rude. I know Aiden quite well. He's just joking with me. But why do I hate modern cars? I don't hate modern cars. I actually like modern cars in different ways. I'm not as passionate about them, but um, sometimes I do boot up ACC or race GT cars. I love the GTE cars in AMS2 at Daytona. Great combination. And I would be interested, if you've made it this far into this video, clearly you're interested in, in this channel, so you'll probably say yes, but I'd be interested if folks would, would want me to do any type of more modern stuff once in a while. But I do like them, but I'm more passionate about the classic cars. And uh, so if, if Sims continue to come out that's all focused on modern content, you know, so be it. I know a lot of folks, it's where a lot of the interest is in sim racing, is to replicate what's out there in the modern day. And there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, hopefully there continues to be some stuff focused on the classics or unexplored areas of motorsport. It doesn't have to be classics, but just something different. To, uh, to take a look at. You know, why don't we have a good IndyCar sim? Why don't we have, I don't know, like a full IndyCar sim? You know, why don't we have Super Formula or, uh, you know, better options for supercars or who knows? I, you know, I'm just trying to think of random stuff that's out there that would be great to have kind of full-fledged experiences around. Think of ACC, but for some of these other series where it's all the rules, all the tracks, all the cars, I know ACC doesn't even do that anymore, but, you know, have a sim that's hyper-focused on these different aspects. I think that could be really cool, and uh, hopefully stuff can come out like that. So, I can't remember the question that even got us down that track, but hopefully I answered it. I'm not distracted by the, uh, the beautiful scenery here. All right, and we got, I think, maybe the last question I'll answer as we uh, work our way back towards the uh, starting area in Laura. But what track or car do I want to come out most during this next year? I wish there wasn't a rev limiter there. <laughs> Just hit the uh, hit it right there at the end to spoil the, uh, the note of the engine. Wow. Really, really nice scenery on this. Jake, Jake Grafton's done a great job on this. And uh, hopefully folks see that. All right, we'll come to the left here. I think this will head us back down this little narrow road. Oh, okay. So which car or track do I want to come out for the next year? So I want to answer both of these. Track is the easier one for me for some reason. It's the thing that immediately comes to mind, and we're going to kind of get it. Well, the car feels very weird there for a second. Right, I think we're all right. We're gonna kind of get this, but I have always loved the circuit Cl Clermont Ferrand, which is not well known. I've found out just talking to folks, but this is a, a track in France. It's in uh, Clermont Ferrand, France, and Formula One race there occasionally in the 60s and 70s. And uh, it's, uh, Clermont Ferrand is the home of Michelin tires, so it's a town that's very much involved in the history of racing. Some scenes in Grand Prix are filmed there. Once you know the circuit, you'll recognize the ones, but they're kind of lounging about those days. An amazing circuit in the 60s. Uh, and I say we're kind of getting this because Race Room is actually coming out with a modern version of Clermont Ferrand. And I think, I think they're right in saying they're the first sim to have this track in, officially featured in it. Because I don't think there's ever been a sim that has had Clermont Ferrand as an official track in it. There's been a modern version for a set of Corsa here. There is a vintage version that I love for Grand Prix Legends, but it's showing its age a little bit. It's been around a very, very long time. But Claremont Ferrand, the classic version of it, the original circuit, is such an awesome track. The scenery is amazing. As you know, I love scenery. But the flow of the track is great, too. It's, it's kind of one of these mountain courses that is kind of like a Nordschleife of France. And I know there is a version in the works for a set of Corsi here, but there's no timeline for when that version would be done, the vintage version. And so Race Room 7, the modern one, I'm definitely gonna look at that. I don't know if I'll make a video about it, depends on 
if it's interesting or not. It is coming with some vintage cars, so those can be fun to uh, to test out. I haven't never done a video on race room. Interesting sim. But that would be the track. If I could have that track in a set of course as a vintage version, in AMS2 as a vintage version, I'd be a pretty happy guy. And uh, be able to share that with everybody. I want to make a video about it. I want to talk about the history of that circuit because it's interesting and tragic and exciting and all these things. One of those great, great racing venues. So Claremont Ferrand would be the circuit. As for the car, it's a tough one. I'm trying to rattle my brain for what car would I possibly want. And I, th I think I'd have to settle on kind of going completely different end of the spectrum. But it would be a vintage indie car of sorts. So 60s or 70s, I think are the underserved eras, even the 80s. And I, again, I, th I feel like AMS2 would be a great place for this, but I would gladly take it in other sims. And I know there's some other stuff out there. I've taken a look at some other vintage USAC and IndyCar mods and things before, but specifically in AMS2, I, I think a, a classic 60s, 70s IndyCar would be a lot of fun. I'm not sure a specific model. I have a hard time imagining they would make a specific model, but obviously the Bronner Hawk or any Eagle chassis would be would be a lot of fun. It's something I feel like that would be pretty new to a lot of folks, uh, especially if they could nail how those cars drove, just super high horsepower, basically get wheel spin. And if we're talking 70s Indy cars, get wheel spin whenever you want it. <laughs> Put the pedal down a little harder, you're gonna get some wheel spin. And uh, those would be really unique cars to drive. Having them in a sim officially, because again, I know there's mods and things out there for those, but that would be that would be quite, quite cool. So I think those would be my picks. Claremont Foran for a track and a uh, USAC IndyCar. 60s or 70s. Early, early wings era would be would be great. So we're coming through the ridge here, and I think we're headed back to Laura, but we'll find out in a second. But absolutely beautiful as the sun's really starting to set here. And uh, I think there's some night lighting on this, so you could drive around at night and have a decent experience as well, obviously with your headlights, but then some of the houses and things will be lit up. And uh, it's only going to get better. Let's come to a tight corner here. It's, it's nice to see folks continue to work on these things because obviously something like this you could spend you could spend a lifetime on. It's kind of like a model of sorts where you're just constantly improving it, adding more objects and optimizing it and things. So uh, sometimes you see these projects get abandoned long before this state, but you know, after a version one release and the hype dies down a little bit, they maybe go without updates, but. Jake here has been continually updating this over the past couple of years, and uh, it's coming coming a long way, especially in the amount of roads to drive, because I feel like we have taken the same road a couple times here, but we've driven down a lot of unique roads, and I'm not even sure where I am anymore on the map, but that's kind of the joy in uh, some of these types of maps, and areas to drive in is not knowing exactly where you're going so that you can experience experience it new. It's fun to lap the Nordschleife as your common example. It's fun to uh, to race around. Even the Targa Florio is, is one of my favorites overall. But once you've done it and you really know these tracks, maybe I will never get there with the Targa Florio, but for something like the Nürburgring, it loses a little bit of its magic. And so these big open areas, I, I feel like that's why folks love these and a set of courses so much because there's just always something to explore. So this, you know, the Japanese highways that Shitoku maybe is the name. Those are really popular. And uh, for good reason, LA canyons, all that stuff. All right, so we'll come down here. Lock up the tire there for a second as I shifted gears without blipping. But we'll take a ride here, and we should be right in Laura. And uh, at the uh, little convenience store, I'll come back to the I'll go back to the parking lot. You you spawn in here to wrap things up. But that's the little convenience store, the Glendo Green store. 
we come down this way, right on the left here, there's a big parking lot where you spawn in. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you made it this far, like I said a few minutes ago, you probably enjoy this type of thing anyway, but I uh, like doing these kind of yearly updates, something random. Got a lot of stuff coming to wrap up the year. Hoping to do uh, do well in the rally. Obviously, Indonesia rally to wrap up the SRM season. Do well with HRRC. And uh, hopefully win the championship there. I don't know, is winning your own championship a bad look? But I'm trying, so <laughs> hopefully can win that and uh, end things strong there. And then, and then see what the new year brings. Kind of a fresh start of sorts, wrapping up a couple big projects in the seasons and all that. And, uh, and try some new stuff. So I appreciate you coming for a ride with me around the Wicklow Mountains and just listening to me ramble here for probably a couple hours. But thank you for watching. This is GP Laps, and I'll see you all again next time.